Yo, 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 what's up everybody? <clears throat> Welcome to the stream. Hope everyone had a good weekend. As usual, I was out of town and price went up. Uh, these this is usually how it goes. Price moves when I'm not home. So, um, We'll get into the charts, all that kind of stuff. Main focus today going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum BTC, ES, the dollar, and then maybe we'll sprinkle in a couple of altcoins after that. <clears throat> but um, real quick, want to give a shout out to the sponsors of these videos. As you guys know, I've been working with Prime XBT for a very long time now. Uh, they've supported me uh, doing these streams, putting out all this content for free for you guys. So if you enjoy watching these videos, um, you want to support me, the best way for you to do that is to use the link in the description. Use the link in the description and then type in code MAIN50 before depositing any money and you're eligible for a 7% deposit bonus to a maximum deposit of 100 grand. You deposit 100 grand, you get a $7,000 bonus. Um, so if you could help me out, you guys want to help me out, make an account on prime, put some money in there, start trading. Um, you can trade equities, right? You can trade the SPX, you can trade gold, you can trade silver, you can trade four X pairs all on prime with no KYC and with crypto as collateral. So that's pretty cool. So if you're wondering, uh, for a way to trade some of the things I talk about that aren't just purely crypto, Prime is the place to do that. All right, guys. So let's get into the video. Um, I've got a pretty good idea of what I think may happen this week. Yo, what's up, SZ? What's up, G? Uh, what I think may happen this week. We obviously have FOMC coming up this week. So if you guys always remember that website I take you to, right? Here, Forex Factory, you hit calendar, okay? And then you see all the economic events. The color of the folder denotes kind of the level of impact. So red, obviously high impact, right? CPI is gonna be this Tuesday at 5.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's an hour before the market open. Um, so we have our CPI announcement. Uh, I guess not FOMC, I'm sorry, CPI. FOMC is Wednesday, so double, oh, this is Canada. Oh, silly me. This is the currency that it affects. So primarily, we as crypto traders, we want to be making sure, we want to be focused primarily on USD news, right? So you have the impact level and you have the currency. So we go down here. It was FOMC, I was correct. So 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 7 p.m. UK time, I believe, um, you're going to have the FOMC. So this is going to be, um, you can click on this little folder here. You can get a little bit more info. So they're going to be discussing interest rates. Are they going to raise the rates, cut the rates? What is going to happen? So right now, we're at 4.75 the expected is five. So they're expecting a 25% basis point hike. Okay. That's what the expectation is. So look, we went four to 4.5, 4.75. So they're expecting a 25% basis point hike. Okay. So why is this relevant? Well, generally, right, we have followed the stock market very closely, okay? And what you've seen is when the rates are not raised as much as we had thought or raised less than last, last time, or even if they're kept the same, the hike is the same amount, it's generally given us a pop in the stock market, right? A little bit of a push. Um, obviously, with what's going on with the banking system right now, now we have Credit Suisse in a bit of turmoil, potentially getting acquired, or they are getting acquired by UBS, right? 
we're going to see a lot of, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on the Fed to help mitigate some of this damage, right? Because they don't want to have some catastrophe and massive, you know, failures across the board on banks. Good chance that, you know, a lot of this money gets backstopped by the federal government. They just print more. Um, But also a good chance that perhaps they slow down the rate hikes, right? Slow down the rate hikes, which would in turn allow um, some relief of the situation, right? But obviously inflation is still high. So the best way they know how to bring inflation down is through these rate hikes. So, um, you know, they're still not at the terminus rate, right? But we, we have to, um, we have to figure out, you know, what's going to happen in the short term here, because that's probably going to have an effect on crypto. So 25 basis points is what is predicted. There's a chance they pause the hikes. So no height increase, no rate increase. Maybe they do 0.5. That would be considered bearish in my opinion. You have to remember a lot of these banks, um, like Silver Bank, right? That one that went down that kind of started this chain of events here. They had a ton of bonds, right? Purchased at a much lower interest rate than the bonds are trading at now, right? And that's a function of what's going on to tighten up inflation. Bond yields go up, the stock market goes down. So what does this mean for crypto? What does this mean for Bitcoin? So right now there's a bit of a narrative that Bitcoin is trading as a proxy to gold, right? So Bitcoin, and I talked about this in the last video, Bitcoin is that flight to safety, it is the thing that, hey, when we're, when people are not confident in the banks, they need crypto, right? They need Bitcoin. So it's interesting and it's, I think, positive that Bitcoin is pumping amidst all of this turmoil. I still don't think necessarily that we have decoupled from the stock market. I think the fact that there was a little bit of a dislocation doesn't mean that that's going to be a permanent thing. The majority of the time over the last couple of years, we've been very much in lockstep with stocks. And I think that will likely continue. Um, But hey, it's nice to see gold does look like it's preparing to run all time highs. Silver looks extremely bullish. The dollar looks kind of bearish. So these are good things. Um, These are good things, right, for crypto, potentially. Now, last stream, we were here, okay? We were down, let's find the exact day, Monday the 13th, here, okay? This candle was last stream. I talked about these equal highs. I'm like, there's no way these equal highs hold, right? No way these equal highs hold. I think we blast through and we trade higher 28 to 30 K has been the numbers that I've been, you know, sharing. We even got a nice little retest there and bang, where have we topped out so far? Just above 28 K at 28 245. So I get that kind of 28 to 30 K zone from the higher time frame here, right? We have this fair value gap right here. The midpoint of which is at 28 something, 20, this is blocking it, 2,800, let's just say 28,000. And then the high is just under 30,000. And we also have this weekly bearish order block. This is the up candle before the down move that sent us into this bottoming period. Okay. So we're into resistance now. Absolutely. In my opinion. Now. How much higher can we go? Are we going to pull back? If we do pull back, how far is it going to be? I'm going to cover a variety of different situations here that I think are possible. So let's start with the bullish discussion because everyone likes to be a bull. Being a bull is just better in general. Um, I do believe that this is a significant range breakout. Now, generally, after seeing a breakout of this magnitude, right? So you have to look at the timing of this, right? 
right? The longer time sideways usually means the bigger move to the upside or downside, depending if it's accumulation or distribution, right? So we have a 260 day, right? 273 days down here in this sideways period in this range, right? Remember this range. 270 days, okay? Traded above the high, down to the low, back to the high, to the mid range, big spike, and now we're pushing up. I do believe that there is potential for this to trade much higher, right? So you look at the super high time frame here. This is your monthly swing, really, right? From here to here. So could we trade up to, you know, the EQ of this? Heck, if you take this entire range, I don't think it's out of the question at all that we could trade up into here. You have a monthly bearish order block there. Okay, and you have the EQ of the range. I know this is a huge range, but this is completely possible. Completely possible. And then we could go down again. Who knows, right? But after this long of sideways and then a significant breakout, the weekly candle looks amazing, right? That weekly candle there is amazing. Huge close through the highs. Um, I think there's a chance we can go much higher. Now, what you have to be aware of, right? is the potential for a pullback first before higher prices rather than just going up from here. Now, I personally don't really want us to spend any time back below these previous highs here, right? So the range high effectively, right, is here. Maybe we dip below, but I really don't want to see us get back below here and hold because then you start thinking, oh shit, Maybe this was just a deviation and we're actually going to trade down to the bottom of the range again, right? So we don't really want to see that. Generally, on large range breakouts like this, like if you go here, you don't always get the super deep retest that you want. This traded way higher and then it gave you the retest, right? So I think the most bullish situation is that the retest is shallow, shallow retest, right? Maybe a quick spike, maybe it dips below the former range high, but only briefly. And the spike is relatively shallow, relatively quick. Okay. So that's the ideal situation. I don't really want to see this come back and trade to 20 K. I don't really want this to stay below 25K for any significant period of time, okay? On the weekly chart here, we have a breaker right here. So this is the up candle for down move that blew out stops, and now we trade it up. So this would be an area I would be looking to get long in. It's confluent with that former range high. So if we get some sort of move back into here, and then I see some lower time frame signs of bullishness, right? You guys know what I like to see. I'm looking to long that. If we get a pullback here, I don't know if it will come this deep. It doesn't have to come this deep. I'm going to go on the, but this is the most relevant area. You also have a weekly order block right there. This is the most relevant area on the weekly. Now we might go down to the 12 hour, the daily, the four hour, and there might be levels that are in here and that might be it. Okay. So that is possible. But from a high time frame perspective, this is the area where I would be looking for something bullish to happen within this weekly breaker, this weekly order block. I would want to see the bull step in there. That's an area that I would look for reasons to get long with more spot because I still have some dry powder and leverage, okay? Obviously, it doesn't have to go that deep. It can be shallow, but this is the area that I'm watching, okay? And then obviously, we're looking to trade up into the weekly order block here first because maybe we just consolidate here and then pop up 
and then dump. Anything can happen, right? So again, I always say this. I'm not trying to predict five moves in advance and when we're going to trade to 42,000. I want to say what is the most likely next direction for price? Personally, I think down a bit makes the most sense and then back up. So can I find a trade from here to here? And then can I find a trade from here to here? Forget about five moves ahead, right? What is the next most likely direction that price is going to go? That's what I want to concern myself with. So on the weekly time frame, my weekly view is exactly that, okay? This is the area that I'm looking to see defended on the weekly chart, okay? Um, oh, look, it's our friend. He's back. Oh, what's up, Kaleo? How you doing, G? Um, not even going to acknowledge that guy as he's in the chat saying deviation, totally possible, right? So totally possible that this is a deviation. Um, literally anything can fucking happen. So I like to try and lay out as you guys know, if this, then that scenarios, right? If this happens, I'm gonna do that. If that happens, I'm gonna do this. And that is how I operate. It's not like, Hey, has to do this. And then has to go up because what happens if it doesn't go down? But then I see a long signal on, you know, the medium time frame. Am I going to just ignore that because it didn't come to my area? Of course not. Mark areas where you think price will be sensitive to. Okay. And where you want to do business and you have the ability to make a plan around those areas, a reclaim, a stop run, whatever it is, whatever your system is. Find the areas that you want to do business and then you wait for price to interact with those areas and then you react accordingly. It's not about prediction. It's about reaction, right? So I personally would love a chance to buy here, but I do believe regardless of whether this holds or not, right, this is my next area of interest. I don't really want to see us trade below this range high for very long. If we start holding below here and putting in bearish market structure, I'm going to short the shit out of this and assume that was just a deviation. I'm going to target new lows. Okay, so I don't really want to see that. Obviously, I'd much rather everything go up and everyone remain happy, but uh, we'll have to wait and see, right? So let's get in on the lower time frames here a little bit. Okay. We have a 12 hour order block right here that price is trading in right now. Okay, so if we see something bullish on the H1, you guys know I like to trade the H12, the H1, I might consider hopping in along here. Okay, so this is all I really see on the 12 hour chart. This order block here, this order block is confluent with that weekly break or weekly order block down here. Right, we have a fair value gap here as well in the 12. But if I see something bullish on this lower time frame in this area, I'm not gonna not long, right? If it makes sense and I see a setup I like, I'll take it. And this is exactly what I mean. I would like to see us come back to here. But if we don't and something bullish occurs in here, right? I'm willing to get in, and that's that shallower pullback idea, and then maybe one more spike. So what I see on the 12 hour, I'm actually going to go down to the hourly now. Um, what I see is very clear here. Okay. We ran this high, broke down. We ran this high and this is now the relevant low, right? So I'm just marking off really, right? These are just breakers. Um, so we have kind of like a double confirmation here for shorts. You could have shorted this SFP, but you have a lot more confidence in this second one, I think, right? Now, if we get below here, okay, what I would want to see is a very quick reclaim of this level, and that might be something I would consider longing. Because if we break and close below here and we stay below here, I think that it's likely that we then are going to take out these lows and potentially fill in down to here. So this 27,450 area is very key in my opinion. Okay, very key in my opinion. 
So I'll be watching this low and seeing what happens. If we sweep it and then reclaim, I'll get long, right? That's exactly what I meant when I was on the 12 hour. If I see something bullish in here, if we sweep one of these lows and put in a big bullish SFP or something like that, I will then um, long it, right? But if we are bearish, we right? We broke a high, broke low, took out the high. If we break low again and just keep selling off, right? I think you could probably take a short on some sort of breakdown here targeting all of these lows here and then maybe even back into 25200 in that weekly order block. So the other thing I could see potentially happening from here, right, is within this 12-hour order block, we sweep like this, we get another move above the high and then a big sell-off, right? So I know I'm laying out a bunch of different scenarios. So how do I actually do um, manage having multiple scenarios, right? So, um, how, how do I manage multiple scenarios? Usually I'll have multiple chart layouts and I will mark up each of them and I will set my alerts. So I'm going to have a, an alert here. Okay. And I'll probably have an alert at this low. Then on one of my chart setups, I'm going to be looking for an SFP. On another one, I'm going to be looking for a break and close below and a short. And on another one, I'll probably mark the highs and say, okay, maybe we run the highs and then I'll see what happens up here. So I'll alert the highs. So I have three different scenarios, right? And I will then have to monitor them. If this happens, then I do that, right? So now I have those parameters set. If we sweep this low, then I look to long. If we break this low and continue to put in bearish market structure, I look to short, right? Very simple stuff. Very simple stuff, right? I lay out the plan and I wait and see. We also have Monday's range to now work with. And that Monday's range lines up very well with the ideas that I just laid out, right? We could sweep this low or we could sweep Monday's low and then trade back in. If we sweep Monday's high and then get back in, I'll look to short. So I'm leaning towards more downside, but I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to let price tell me what it wants to do. I'm not going to force anything. I'm not going to force anything. I'm just going to let price do its thing and I'm going to wait for it to get into an area of interest for me, which is above here or below here or below here. Okay. Because once we interact with the area that I'm interested in, right, then I can execute on the plan, right? Then I can execute and do whatever I want. Um, whatever I think might be the most likely outcome again. And we don't know, I could be completely wrong, right? This could just roll over from right here and not give me an entry. This could just pump from here and go to 32,000, right? So you have to be prepared to be wrong, right? And you have to realize that it's not the end of the world. You're not going to get every prediction, right? You're not going to get every trade, right? You can get half of them right, close to half, and you have proper risk rewards, good risk management, you're going to make money. So that's kind of my plan right now for Bitcoin. Um, I'm not in a position currently, okay? I'm waiting and seeing. Do we push up? Do we break down? I do think that this is quite an important FOMC meeting. So I wouldn't be surprised if I just end up not taking any trades until after it's over and we kind of get that direction, right? I think Confluent, so hopefully everyone's clear on the BTC plan, right? I've marked out the areas of interest, weekly area of interest, 12-hour area of interest, and then how I plan on executing based on this zone and the one hour chart, which is my exclamation, my ex, uh, my execution time frame. Um, so hopefully everyone's pretty clear on that. I think it's pretty straightforward. 
here's your key low to watch initially and then Monday's low and let's wait and see what happens, okay? Now, something that might be confluent with Bitcoin trading higher before lower is the picture on equities here. So if you guys remember, we caught down here is a reason to get bullish, right? Wanted to get bullish down here. Said I'm targeting this fair value gap. Pushed up, got a rejection. I said, okay, now I want to see a bounce from this 12-hour order block. That's what we're seeing. And we're now trading right around Monday's high. To me, this kind of looks like inducement, right? You have these highs, relatively equal highs right here. I wouldn't be surprised if price pushes through those up to maybe 40, 20. And then back below Monday's high, target one, target two, then potentially the range low. So this is a kind of scenario I'm looking at on ES right now. A push up above these highs, and then if it gets back within Monday's range, I would look to short this thing down. I think what's nice about this as well is let's say we get that um, push up from semi-positive FOMC news, right, about rates, spikes up, then breaks down after and the direction is revealed as down or maybe it goes the other way. I don't know. If we flip this fair value gap, right? If this fair value gap gets flipped and we start trading above 4040, then I would target higher prices. I would target up here and I would target up into this order block as well. But for now, I think my plan is move up here. And then if we get some weakness, start breaking down, I'm looking to get into a short back into Monday's range, okay? So that could be confluent with Bitcoin potentially making, you know, another high before breaking down. We'll have to see. The correlation has been not as tight lately, right? Bitcoin looks a little bit more like gold than it does um stocks right now but i still think if we get um if we get a move a significant move on the stock market i do think bitcoin will respond so let me check the chat here man this guy keeps making new accounts and i just keep banning him it's kind of hilarious um not going to give him the attention he so desperately craves um let's see here Who's shorting Matic? You mean who's copy trading Trader SZ? That's a better question. And Trader XO. Axis is Axis is due for a big payout. Maybe it might be Molly Maine. That was me this weekend. Saturday was lit. Got real fucking wasted. It was a good time. Um, let's go. Hope you had a great weekend. Thank you, bro. Jose, what's up, bro? What's going on, Jane? Um, I've got a 12,000 Matic short open right now. All right, bro. Well, hopefully it goes down for you. We can take a look at Matic. I know a bunch of you are copy trading SZ, so I'll take a look at it. I'll see what I see. What's up, Steven? Um, okay. What's up, Kid Ked? What's up, Prototype? Cody, what's up, bro? Um, thank you, Comodork. What's up from Canada? Goonie, what's up, bro? We are very close to the notorious gay line. You guys remember I made that video on the gay line ages ago. I said below 30K and you are gay, right? And we broke below there in June of last year. It's almost April, okay? So we have been gay for three quarters of 2023, a long time to be gay it's longer than i've ever been gay so uh it's it's tough and i know i have a girlfriend and that's what makes it so hard because i have to respect the gay line so like even though i have a girlfriend i'm still gay you know what i mean so uh we are close to the gay line get back above 30k and hold we can all go back to being straight and having girlfriends and you know just doing all that straight person stuff if you want to you want to remain gay that's your prerogative no hate here but 
Under 30K, everyone is gay, mandatory. That's just that's just how it is. Above 30K, it's your choice. You want to be gay, you want to be straight, you want to be bisexual, it's up to you. But below 30K, every single one of us is gay. You got a new room. When was the last time you watched, bro? I've been in the new place for a while. Uh, what, when BTC finds a local top, what alts are you looking at to short for the higher beta play? Well, you're going to want to go through your list of alt BTC pairs. FBTC looks awful, right? This looks awful. I thought that this sweep that we had here was going to be enough to push higher. We swept this high on the weekly nuke town, right? Absolutely disgusting. We now have a weekly bearish breaker here on FBTC, confluent with the mid-range. So if we see some sort of move up here and then Bitcoin finds its high, F probably a great short because it looks like it looks like, right? We've been in this is a range for like two years. It looks like ran the high, ran the low, ran the high. It looks like it wants to test the low again. So that would be an example of a coin. You know, and you, that would potentially dump harder than Bitcoin if the market was to correct and have a big pullback. Good question. Neck plus stash gold. Thank you, bro. What is the daily withdrawal limit? Um, I don't think they have a withdrawal limit, but I do know that if you deposit money and it's because I've had this happen before, deposit a bunch of money, um, and then I tried to withdraw it right away, they might flag it and be like, "Where you know what's going on here, blah, 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 and they say it's because of money laundering, whatever. Um, most exchanges will do this, right, if you're not KYC'd. So my, my strategy when I do want to uh, you know, withdraw from Prime is I just withdraw in small increments and I usually do it after the account's been aged a little bit, meaning I've traded on it. It's not an account I made yesterday, that kind of thing. I told my girlfriend I don't think SZ sleeps. I don't think he sleeps either. One mil in 90 days. I think anyone who actually thinks that possible is delusional or trying to grift you with just some bullish hopium bullshit. And there's lots of those on crypto Twitter. There's a lot of literal dumbasses on there just spewing fucking garbage all the time. It's quite something. High concentration of low IQ people on crypto Twitter. Some of the smartest people I've ever interacted with are on there and some of the dumbest motherfuckers i've ever interacted are on there um main did you change your sound setup your voice is hella sexy right now well the mic is a lot closer to my face because i got a boom arm see whereas before it was on my desk so it was further away so i think the quality wasn't as good i've been told i've got a voice and face for radio so um okay let's see bro you're looking thinner and good thank you jay thank you bro i am down i'm sub 195 for the first time in a long time kind of been on like a perma bulk for the last like two years just bulking and bulking and eating and i'd start to cut and then i'd give up because food is so good and beer is so good but i'm like okay i want to lose a little bit of weight i'd love to get to like 185 190 just get a little leaner so that's kind of what i'm working on when has Z stream soon? We'll definitely do one soon. This guy says four hour rising wedge would target. What did he say? Target 24.5K. Is this a rising wedge here, I guess? Is this what he means? That's a circle. That is definitely not a wedge. Like this. I don't know. Maybe, bro. Anything is possible. What is a rising wedge? Right? What is this? How? What are the rules? Generally, right? Okay. 
trading here. Boom, boom, boom. And then the idea is like, okay, maybe it fakes out the high, but then it breaks below and then it sells off and you can do a projection to how low it might sell off. Well, what's really happening here? What I see is higher highs and higher lows, but decreasing momentum, right? Decreasing momentum. So the highs are only slightly higher than previously. It's not big, expansive moves. The momentum is, is decreasing. And then I see this is a fake out. It doesn't always have to happen. But then I just see a break in market structure. Momentum shifts, right? It's petering out. Break in market structure goes down, right? So I don't really use these shapes and these patterns. I just look at price action and market structure. But I, my opinion is that these patterns, right, wedges and bear flags and bull flags and shit, they're just a visual, easy way for people to understand market structure. But once you really start to understand market structure, you don't need the shapes anymore, right? You can just make kind of make these assumptions just based on hey are we holding bullish market structure or did we flip to bearish market structure breaking a significant low whatever so you see this as a rising wedge well then if i'm correct right if this is a rising wedge forming here right and my opinion is that this is just highs that are becoming less aggressive momentum's dying like this is a huge move this is a big move above this high but then this is just a littler move above this high. So that they're getting less and less strong. Well, if I'm correct in that assumption, then if I were to throw on like the RSI, the awesome oscillator, right? Would you look at that? We have a bearish divergence here. We have higher highs. On price, we have lower highs on RSI. We have lower highs on the AO, right? So that lines up with my you know, presumption that a wedge really is just you know, a up move that is losing momentum, right? A rising wedge, a falling wedge would be the reverse, right? It'd be a down move that's losing momentum. What's up, Slim? What does the P stand for in SFP? Swing failure pattern. Where did you learn to trade from? Lots of places. Um, Trader SZ, ICT, Chris Laurie, Larry Williams. I've taken a bunch of paid content. Tom Dante. I've paid for tons of mentorships over the years. And I've just kind of amalgamated it into, you know, kind of a style that works for me. Yeah, this guy has a lot of accounts. Clearly, he keeps making new ones and coming in and calling me a jester and saying I'm going. I found he made a Twitter, too, and he kept telling me I'm going to jail on it. So I had to block him there as well. Um, the idea that he is there at his house you know, in his mother's basement, neck beard, super fat and disgusting looking, a man, but full of estrogen. That guy's gay. Even if we go above 30K, gay, super gay, right? Probably has a little micro penis. And he's just sitting there, mom, more hot pockets and typing away on his computer. Got to make another account. So I can tell this guy that he's a jester. Got to make another account. He banned me again. He's fucking sitting there disgusting Cheeto dust all over his chest and his keyboard and his mouse. And his mouse. Just a disgusting image. Disgusting image. I actually feel bad for the guy. You know, I really do. Because after this stream, you know, I'm going to go back into my million dollar condo. Look out at the beautiful views. My super hot girlfriend's going to come home. I'm going to bang her. That's going to be sweet. Probably get a little high, watch a movie. And I'm going to wake up tomorrow rich and handsome and uh, make a bunch more money. So, you know, there's there's levels to the game, right? There's levels to the game. I'm not, by, I'm not at the top by any means. Not yet. I'm going there. 
But uh, this guy is like the lowest rung of society, right? The lowest rung of society, haters and trolls. That's like as low as low can get. Literally, okay? It's like terrorists, very bad. Murderers, right? Pedos, trolls, all kind of on the same level in my books. Just like pedos, we should castrate them and just throw them in jail forever. Um, Anyways, okay. Too much going on in the chat here, guys. Um, This guy says he gets a... Hey, look, he's back. He's made another account. See, you'd be sneakier if you stopped making the account the same name every time. Um, But whatever. I'm going to just ignore you now. Uh, (laughs) Trader SZ said I just described him. Come on, bro. We all know you're not fat. You do too much cocaine and smoke too many cigs to be fat. Don't lie to me, dog. Don't lie to me. Okay, so let's get this disgusting oscillators off of my screen. Okay, but the premise of that falling wedge, hopefully that was informative to you guys. Um, He said, I had a dream about doing certain things with you while you learned TA is useless. This guy's now having sex dreams about me. I told you he was gay. Oh my God. Disgusting. Haram. Haram. All right. Um, So what are those green and red bars? That's called the awesome oscillator. If you're interested in learning about that, check out uh, cold-blooded Schiller's stuff. He uses it like a beast. Okay, so rolling over a little bit now. Again, I'm probably not going to enter a trade unless we're sweeping above here or we're putting bearish market structure in below this low, okay? And if at any point we SFP one of these lows, right? Run it, then put in a break in market structure upside, I'll flip long if it happens. Otherwise, if I take this short and we just keep trading lower and lower, I'll be looking towards that weekly order block. All right, so let's look at Ethereum here quickly. Ethereum looks worse than Bitcoin. So again, FBTC, right, is bearish as shit right now. Looks like it wants to trade down to the range lows. If that happens, right, and we keep trading down and the whole market rolls over, F is probably going to fall harder than Bitcoin. So we have... Cool. We'll do the same thing we did on Bitcoin. So we are still within this range on Ethereum, right? Bitcoin broken out. Ethereum has not, right? So that's shown in the FBTC chart, right? This is trending down. Ethereum is lagging behind Bitcoin. It is still in this range well bitcoin is not as z says the quant says we nuke now hold on to your fucking butts then guys so we're still trading within this range here um you know we do have a nice weekly sfp here and the same as bitcoin we have a weekly breaker ethereum being weaker than bitcoin It's in its breaker now, whereas Bitcoin put in a leg higher and still hasn't retested it. So I think it's worth watching Ethereum in this area here if we see something bullish, right? If we see something bullish. So I'm just going to get rid of, well, actually, no, I'll leave this on. Um, Remember, we drew this zone, right? And then I had the arrow to 2K from here bang so i would have liked to have seen you know if bitcoin is near a high at least temporarily i thought ethereum would be higher um you know i want to see ethereum trade to 2k Uh, i want to see it trade to you know up here um above this high right so that's why i was hoping that this was going to catch a bid and then maybe ethereum gets to move up so this is going to be one to watch definitely a good proxy for altcoins as well Um, But zooming in on the 12 hour, so we have this 12 hour trading range here, this low to this high, okay? 
Ideally, if you want to long Ethereum, I want to either long on a breakout of the range or I want to long in the lower part of the range. So if the whole market nukes and it rolls over, right? I think Ethereum probably trades down to this range low. And if we get some sort of bullish PA here, this would line up very well with my thought process, right? We sweep the range low here, put in bullish market structure. We're within the weekly bullish order block. That's confluence for me to get long, okay? That's the kind of stuff I want to see for the bulls, right? I'm not really interested in longing right here. Maybe we go up from right here. I do not care. I'm not interested in longing until we're at an area that I want to long at, right? So the way I see it is that area is in the lower part of this range. So from this low to this high, I want to see us move down to here and then potentially be interested in longing, right? So basically I want everything to pull back. Just like on Bitcoin, this could run these highs and then get back inside. It's totally possible. Anything is possible. We have Monday's range here as well. So maybe the move up is shallow. I reckon if Ethereum moves back up to here, Ethereum will be trading or Bitcoin will be trading above its high. And then maybe this just nukes. So I'm watching this 12 hour range. I'm watching this low, which is Monday's low, which is below the 50%. And then I'm watching this low, which is this 12 hour range low. Some sort of sweep here and bullishness I would long, some sort of sweep here and bullishness I would long. And just like on Bitcoin, if we break and close and hold below Monday's low, I'd be looking to short that down to here. So I don't care. I don't need to short here. We get the setup I like here. I'm going to have a stop defined, an entry defined, and a target defined. All the pieces of the puzzle right there. Okay. Obviously, on the bullish side, we are in this weekly order block. So if I see something bullish happen at one of these lows, like I mentioned, we also have a 12 hour order block here. So this is something that could potentially be interesting, right? You have a low sitting right above a bullish order block. So maybe we come down into it. And that would be your long trigger. But I'm going to wait and see. I'm not really in a huge rush um, to get into a trade based on what's going on this week with FOMC and things like that. I've had a very good week last week catching the long side on both Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I don't need to be in a rush to force a trade right now with some huge announcement coming in two days. I can be patient. But I have clear defined areas of interest that I'm potentially looking at to trade. And I just chill and I wait in the meantime. So looking at Ethereum, looks like it's rolling over a little bit, right? You have this hourly bearish order block here, up candle before the down move that broke the low, retest, potentially selling off. So if we get to Monday's low, let's see how we react around there. Crypto icon says it's over. Gonna nuke now. Maybe. Maybe. Um, something to remember as well, guys. Right? This yearly candle has basically no wick. Food for thought. Food for thought. <laughs> So we got to see, we also have a key monthly close coming up here, right? So as bullish as everything looks, we have a monthly close below these highs here, right? Maybe then we go for this monthly low. I don't know. So I'm going to wait and see. I'm not really, like I said, in some huge rush to get into a trade. I did well last week. I'm going to let price come to me. So we've covered Bitcoin. We've covered Ethereum. We've covered um, Ethereum BTC. So now let's look at the dollar and then I will do some altcoins. So I'll do Matic because it seems like a lot of people um, are talking about Matic.
Um, and yeah, I'll take some other some other requests. What's going on in the chat here? What's up, Riley? How you doing, bro? Um, hmm. Thoughts on going all in on having. Every major bull market has usually has started after having, right? Maybe it started before, but it really got going after having. Like the last having, I think we were at 10K, if I'm not mistaken, right? And then obviously rip from there. So we have having, and I believe May of 2024, right? So a little over a year away. Um, you know, I would like, and I've talked about this before, right? I would love to see, you know, more sideways, maybe higher, but then more sideways. And then, yeah, next year, start a whole new bull run. That being your bottoming period definitely could happen. Just going all in because it's having, I don't know. I don't know if I would advise that. I don't advise anything um, because I am not a financial advisor, but um, what I would say is you want the chart to tell you, you know, as well, like the last having, if you would have went all in, you would have done well, but the chart was also in an uptrend, right? So it made sense to be bullish. The chart is in a downtrend and the world is still in turmoil and like shit and stocks are still nuking next year. Maybe you don't want to just go all in, right? Maybe something else will happen. So you still want to primarily base your decisions, in my opinion, on the chart. Because going all in on having does not define risk, right? When is that idea wrong? Let's say we're at 20K at the next having and you go all in. If it trades down to 15, are you still holding? If it trades down to 10, are you still holding, right? You haven't defined you don't have all the pieces of that trade idea, right? You need to know why are you entering? Where are you entering, right? Kind of like who, what, where, when, why? When are you entering? Also, do you have your risk, right? I always talk about a checklist, right? I always talk about checklist. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about. Do I know why I want to enter this trade? What is the reason? Is it an SFP? Is it a break of structure, a breaker, whatever, right? That's the why. When is this happening? Okay, is it based on a certain candle close? Is it a day trade and I'm trying to trade during the kill zone? You know, that kind of thing. When do I want to see this move happen? Um, how I'm going to enter and managing risk, right? Where's my stop? Where's my target? Is there asymmetry there? Or is it a one-to-one? -one? If it's a one-to-one, -one, I'm not taking the risk box. I'm not taking that trade. My stop has to be 10% away and my target is 10% away. That's not a trade I'm interested in taking, right? But if my stop is 5% away and my target is 15% away, all of a sudden, yeah, that's a trade I want. So having just a rule, like I'm going to go all in at having, it just doesn't really make sense to me, right? Because where's that idea right? Where is it wrong? You don't know, right? But if there's an uptrend and there's a clearly defined market structure and you say, okay, I'm having, that's a piece of confluence and a reason that you might want to be bullish, but it all stems from the chart, in my opinion, first. What's up, Drew? Drow Fang, gang? Drew gang? I never know how to pronounce your name. Drew, right? Drew. Um... Man, your telegram has been insanely helpful. Bro, I'm glad. What's up, man of the bounce? What's up, blueberry haiku? Bottle box one, two, three says short before CPI. Swaggy Yaki says hi. Hello, Swaggy. How much higher as in one mil? I don't even know who that fucking guy is who's talking about the one mil target. Everyone's like, oh, look at this guy. Like, I guess he used to be the CTO at Coinbase? Was that it or something? I don't know. I think he's a Fed. I think he's a Fed. Good short from 28 to 28.2K. 
Possibly. Yeah. Like I, that was one of the potential scenarios, right? Run the high and then get back in. Sure. Yeah. CBS says, wait for people to say F is dead, then buy ETH. Wait for people to say it's going to flip BTC and that's when you sell. Generally, that works pretty good. If you're watching on Twitter, we're already starting to see a lot of BTC maxis troll with the FBTC chart. You know, ha, 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 look at this fucking shitty chart. Well, look. Within this price swing, we're now trading below the 50%. So I'm absolutely looking for reasons for this chart to bottom out somewhere below the 50%. Maybe it goes all the way to that previous range low, which I think is, let's, let's just do two here. Okay, so we have this and let's do this one. What you'll see here, right? We have this big high time frame range and then we have this swing. Okay, I want to see price bottom in the lower half of this price swing, which is from here to here. That old range low, right, is within the lower 50%. Maybe we don't go that low, but I guarantee if we start trading down to here, this range low, everyone is going to start screaming how F is dead and it's all about Bitcoin and blah, blah, blah. And that will probably be the time to look for a potential reversal. But it's in the area of interest. I'm not looking to short this necessarily. I'm looking for this to actually bottom down here and then bounce. Doesn't mean it has to make a new high, but bounce. If I put my fib on here, there's your sweet spot. We just hit the 0.62 of this range. There's your 70.5. Your 79 is right at that range low there. So definitely, definitely something to watch. So let's look at Matic. Everyone's copy trading as Z. So everyone is short this. So let's see, let's see why. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, you copy trading XO, same thing. Him and SZ are the same person. Everyone knows this. Okay, so looking at Matic, well, first, right, this looks weak, right? What does Matic BTC look like? Fucking shit, right? So Matic's an interesting one. This is up from just two years ago. It went up 10,000%. 10,000%. I don't know what the fuck Matic does. I don't know anything about the tech, nor do I care. Okay. But it went up 10,000% in the last two years. Even now it's up 6,700%. Yes, it had a big pullback here, right? So it did have a big old, a, a little dumper Rooney, right? From here down to here, 70% pullback. This is a 75% pullback. Right. So absolutely, you know, it's had pullbacks and it's trained, but this is, you, I, I think it's relevant to be like, okay, this coin went up 10,000% in the last two years and people are just assuming it's going to go higher. Right. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, in my opinion, this is versus BTC, right? It's appreciated 10,000% versus BTC in the last two years and still up over 6,000%. Okay, I think that it's a little nuts to just assume that something that is pumped this fucking hard is just automatically, yeah, it's got to go higher, right? I agree with SZ and I agree with um, XO that this is a you know chart that could really fucking eat shit, right? If you look here, the BTC pair is just breaking a key low right now. And we've got these lows 
all sitting here that I think very likely get run before any sort of bounce, right? You have a weekly order block here, weekly breaker, and a weekly fair value gap all here. To me, this supports the idea, a move down here versus BTC, that you know, Matic USD is a short. Um, SZ says he's only shorting because he hates their logo. I don't even know what their logo is. Um, so it shows you how much I know. Is this it up here? Is that the logo? It is kind of ugly. So Matic, US, Matic BTC looks bad, right? Now let's look at the USD pair. Okay, on the weekly chart, came up into weekly demand here, right? SFP'd, or weekly supply, excuse me, right? SFP'd this high. That was the king short up there, right? Now we're zooming in. What do we got here? We got 12 hour bearish order block right here. This is an SFP right here. So it looks kind of shitty, right? It looks kind of shitty. I think you can short any sort of bounce here, right? If this bounces up to here, I think you're pretty safe probably with your stop above that order block. Now, I don't know... Um, I don't know if you want to, you know, give it a ton of room over here, right? But there's potential that it could still run this high. So maybe you want to put it a little higher, right? Maybe you want to put it at 130 just in case, right? We get some sort of very deep spike before selling off further, right? But right now, I think as long as it's trading below this gray box here, I think there's no problem with having a bearish bias on this thing. Maybe we get some sort of move up here and then a sell off. Maybe we run these highs and then sell off. Maybe we just shit the bed from here. But based on how Matic BTC looks and how this pair looks, rejecting on the weekly, now rejecting on the 12 hour, I think that it makes sense to potentially you know, be short biased on this chart. It's making lower lows and lower highs here. Clearly ran that high. To me, just looking at this, this seems like the next draw for price, at least right down to here. Okay. Um, let's see here. What are some other questions? Good morning, Maine from the UK. Where would you start with ICT's teachings? Um, I would watch some of his 2016 mentorship. Uh, I would also watch the Went series, what every trader needs to know. Scout Sniper series, the Market Maker series. But I would just watch a couple of his videos initially and see if you like his teaching style because he is an acquired taste to say the least uh, he can drone on for a very long time he loves to rant he loves the sound of his own voice clearly um, and that's not going to work for some people a lot of people are like i only watch ict on 2x speed or one and a half x speed and i totally get that i personally have watched everything he is basically ever put out up until like the end of last year. I haven't watched his new stuff this year. I think one of the issues with ICT, and let me preface this with ICT, I would consider as my main mentor. The majority of the concepts I use, the verbiage I use, right, is all stuff I learned from him. Now, have I picked up pieces from other traders like SZ and, and Tom Dante, et cetera? Absolutely. And I've made my own style. 
And I think one of the issues with ICT, and this is not a knock on ICT per se, is there's just so much content, right? I could I could show you a list this long of all the different concepts, right? Power three, AMD, uh, order blocks, mitigation blocks, rejection blocks, breaker blocks, fair value gaps, volume imbalances, like all of these different concepts, right? That he has and he teaches over the years. And it's very easy to get confused because you have analysis paralysis by analysis, right? You have so many things. Oh, there's an order block here, but there's also a breaker here. And well, this is an SFP, but that's a volume imbalance. And there's a fair value gap here. You don't know what the fuck to do, right? You don't know what the fuck to do. It's too much on the fucking chart, right? You've marked up the chart and there's a fucking, you know, PDA rate everywhere. So, what I think is you're better off, you first of all, watch some of his videos, see if they resonate with you. Do you like his teaching style or not? Because if you don't, it's a fucking slog to get through. But if you do, um, if you do take care of it, right, or if you do like it and you watch the videos, um, find the concepts that resonate the most with you and just focus on that, okay? You can make an entire system just using order blocks, um, fair value gaps, and SFPs and breakers. Just those four. There's so many more, but just those four, you can have an entire system. My entire system is based on liquidity runs, right? So SFPs or you know deviations, um, breakers, order blocks, and fair value gaps. That's all I really use from ICD. Sometimes I notice market maker buy models and sell models. I used to have a bunch of tweets back in the day that went crazy with those. And when they would work out, I'd post them out, right? So that that's 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 another thing I use sometimes or like power three, right? Accumulation, manipulation, distribution. I've used that kind of stuff before, right? Like this, for example, is a power three. Kind of right here. Accumulation, manipulation, expansion, right? Um, so that's one I watch as well. But the basics of my strategy, order blocks, breakers, liquidity runs, and fair value gaps. That's it. And I think a lot of people would benefit from simplifying ICT down. Realize you do not need this PhD level understanding of some of the stuff he talks about. Some of the stuff he talks about is crazy complicated and uh, it just is not necessary in my opinion now if you want to go into all of it by all means um, you know go for it but uh, I don't think it's necessary to watch all of his shit I think you can make a system with some of the basics and and go from there and what's gonna be more of a benefit to you than any of the videos he put out is your time in the charts Um, let's see. Johnny C. Dude, let's make a training series. I'll fund production. Okay. How much are you going to give me, Johnny? How much is my time worth in your opinion? Yo, main finally live again. Take care of your health, bro. Avoid the sore throat. What's your thoughts on GCR thesis that this cycle will be similar to 2019, 2020? So is that just the echo bubble thesis, right? That is that GCR's um, idea is that this is the echo bubble. We're just doing this again. I mean, personally, I would love this because that means that we're going to have a big move up. Then we're going to have a ton of time to short and we're going to have another chance to buy cheap. So I would love for that theory to be right. Um, GCR is pretty good at predicting things. But again, right, him saying, hey, I think this is an echo bubble. That's not a trade. That's something you can have in the back of your mind and you can think about. Right. But that's not a trade. Now, I don't actually remember 
um, what's going on, what was happening in this move up in terms of was it spot led or was it derivatives led? What I do know is this rally has been primarily spot buying, right? So it's been led by spot. So here's your spot exchanges, right? Coinbase, Bitstamp, right? And then here's your derivative ex your derivative pairs, right? Bybit, Binance, Darebit, et cetera. So you can see there's a premium on the spot, right? It's trading about a hundred dollar premium. And then if you look at some of the tools that are available that you can track, you know, is the move being led by derivatives or by spot? It all shows that spot has been primarily leading this move. And it also is relevant in funding. You generally don't see the crazy funding swings in the other direction when a spot when it's a spot led move. Just because it's spot led, it does not mean it can't nuke. Spot can get dumped. They can gap the book down. Um, it can sell off extremely quickly. But generally, a spot led rally is more sustainable than a not spot led rally, than a than a derivatives led rally. So how high this goes? I don't really know, right? I have no idea. But uh, if GCR is right, I'm not opposed to that at all because then, like I said, we're going to have an opportunity to short and we're going to have, an well, potentially higher prices, opportunity to short the way down and another opportunity to potentially buy cheaper. Maybe, like imagine something like this, right? Way up here, everyone thinks we're going to new all-time highs and then we dump all the way back down into this range. I would love that because first of all, huge opportunities for longs here, lots of opportunities for shorts here, and another opportunity to buy spot in what will potentially end up being the bottoming range. What else do we got here, fellas? Do I offer mentorship? Not at this time, no. As the thank you for deleting all these messages on my behalf, saving me time. Do I put any merit on alerts with big moves hitting exchanges? I personally don't. I don't look at funding. I don't look at any sort of indicators. I don't look at like the fucking tech at all. I have a chart monkey. All I do is look at the chart and make my decisions purely based on the chart. That is it. Um, so I get a lot of questions about that all the time. What indicators do you use? Da, da, da. I'm showing you exactly how I trade, I'm showing you the exact things I look for, the places I mark up. I've showed you guys how I enter trades. I've shared a ton of stuff for free. Um, and I'm not hiding some secret sauce behind a curtain, right? Are there nuances and little things that I keep to myself? Absolutely. But I'm not hiding some secret indicator that I use um, that gets me in and out of all my trades that I'm not sharing. Um, I don't look at any of that stuff. People are, can be very successful looking at heat maps, funding, and da-da-da. Just not something I do. Sailors break even is 30K. They won't let this man win. I wouldn't be surprised if Sailor eventually um, outperforms everyone just by holding, but we'll see. Um, okay, let's look at the dollar real quick here. So the dollar, as you guys know, right? We were tracking this move, okay, above this high. I said, okay, I think we trade down now. We initially had marked this breaker I thought this might reject, but we tagged a little higher and it ended up coming up to this 12 hour OB, which is nice because that's in the upper part of the range, right? So here's a piece of alpha. Generally, when I'm trading, right? Let's say this is your range. I don't know why I'm drawing this out, trying to eyeball it when I literally have a tool that will do it for me. Okay, so this is your range here, right? Now, 
If I'm bearish, so we're in this range. And I think eventually we trade down to some low that's way over here. So I'm bearish. If I'm looking to short this price leg, well, let me just adjust my drawing now. Okay, this price swing. If I'm looking to short down to here, I don't want to short in the bottom part of the range. This would be price at a discount. I want to buy at a discount. I want to sell at a premium. This is premium. This is discount. Okay. Your OTE, right, is either in premium or discount, depending on what way you think we're going. So, oops, I did not mean to do that. So, if I think we're ultimately going to trade below here, right? I ideally want to see price to trade up into a premium. So I want to be looking in the upper part of this range for levels, old highs, things like that, where I can frame a trade. So just like on DXY, right, that you saw here, here's your range. There's a 12-hour order block in the upper part of that range, right? So that's the kind of shit I want to look for up here. So maybe there's an order block here and we have this old high. Now I want to get short and I want to target the range low, right? The other option could be potentially we run all the way above this high, right? But then if we're back below, we're in a premium this is a deviation. I'm now looking to short this back to the mid range and potentially the range low. The complete inverse of that would be for bullish price. So if I think we're eventually going to trade up here, or let's go one more thing, right? The other thing is let's say we don't get this, right? If I'm interested in shorting and I still think we're going to trade down here, if we break below the range low and stay below it, then yeah, by all means, short it. But I don't want to short in here because the likelihood, in my opinion, generally, is that we're going to retrace into the premium of the range. Exact opposite for bear, for bulls, right? You think eventually we're going to trade here. So price is coming up. Now it's trading here. I want to be in the discount, right? I want to look for old lows, order blocks, breakers, et cetera, in the lower part of this range or a sweep of this low or a break and close above here, right? So I'm not interested in longing in the upper part of the range. I'd rather see, oh, here's an order block. We took out an old low. Boom. I'm now long going up into here. That's a huge part of what I do, right? is I look for trades to occur in a specified area. So in practice, right, here's your range. I believe that we're trading lower. I think we trade down into these lows. We just broke market structure the downside. My bias is bearish. Don't short here, right? I'm waiting for a retracement into the range. And what happens? Bang, right into a 12-hour order block. And then we get the sell-off. Right now we have a new range here. We have here to here. What could I be looking for now? I don't know. Potentially a move up. And then lower again. Right? I don't know. But looking at the dollar. Right? We got the reaction I suspected. Now if you go to the weekly here. Um, was it the weekly? Let me see where I put this in my fucking journal. Uh, no, not the weekly. 12 hour. Here we go. Okay, so what I see now potentially is we have a break in market structure here, right? We have this new price swing from here to here. So I'm looking for some sort of move up here to reject and then trade eventually to this low. So I don't know how high it will go, right? 
but I want to see some sort of move up and then a move down to this low. That's my bias on the dollar for now. Um, we could have a very shallow pullback and then dump. I don't know, right? But ultimately, I think based on how the chart looks, based on market structure, that this is the next low, right? This is the draw on liquidity. So if I know the draw on liquidity, if I believe the draw on liquidity is lower, right? I'm now going to look at, you know, USD based denominated pairs and for reasons to long. So if I think that the dollar might trade up a bit and then down, when it starts to roll over, I'm going to look at things like Euro USD, right? And I'm going to say, okay, where can I, that clearly worked out very well. Where can I get long this, right? So if the dollar trades up initially, maybe this trades back into this 12 hour order block. And then if the dollar starts to roll over, I'll be looking for reasons to long this thing to these highs and maybe up into here, right? So that's how you do that cross market analysis. Um, Ryan Horbin, you can be a fucking moderator if you just mute idiots. Hi, main biggest fan of yours. This is the biggest bull trap I've ever seen. That's from Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. He created Facebook. He also starred in the, I believe, Oscar winning movie, The Social Network. Um, or maybe it got snubbed for an Oscar. I know it was nominated for best picture. So Mark, what's up, bro? What are you doing with all my data? Hmm? All my pictures on Facebook, my posts, my information. Who are you selling it to? Is it the Chinese? You son of a bitch. Um, okay. I think I'm going to end the video here, guys. I have, uh, it's, it's late here and I have some um, calls early tomorrow morning. So, I think this is a good place to end the video. It's been an hour and a half. So you guys got my areas of interest, right? We know where we're looking to interact with Bitcoin and Ethereum. I've laid out my plans. We've got a plan for stocks, right? We've got a plan for the dollar. I've gone over Matic. I think gold and silver remain bullish. Even if they pull back a little, I think they trade higher. I ultimately would like to see silver trade above this high and hit $25. Gold looking extremely bull. We do have a bit of a you know SFP here, but I don't know. I'm pretty bullish on gold still. So let's wait and see, right? When looking for a trade on BTC or altcoin, do you look at DXY to see how the dollar is trending, see if the trade is the same, i.e. BTC looks bullish while DXY is bearish? What is the denominator of BTC? It's USD. It's not always a one-to-one -one correlation, but when did the most recent bottom happen, right? When was the bottom? October, November? What was the top? October, November on the dollar, right? Dollar got bearish, Bitcoin got bullish. How about this entire bear market? Where was the top of 60K? Right here. Dollar ripped, Bitcoin crashed. It's not always going to be one-to-one. -one. People try and say they're not correlated because it's not one-to-one. -one. not saying it's one-to-one, -one, but the dollar is half of the fraction BTC USD. So it is relevant to look at for anything that has USD in the pair. It could be USD JPY, right? If I look at USD BTC, this can't be right. Um, D, I want to see DXY divided by BTC 
USD. Does that make sense? Someone who's better at trading view needs to tell me the equation to do this. Is that what I want? I don't know. But eh, sure it is, right? This is USD over BTC. It's the inverse of the BTC USD chart, effectively. It looks like the dollar, right? Big rally. When this is going up, it means USD is stronger than Bitcoin. Now it's going down. Bitcoin is stronger than USD, right? So USD JPY is going to have the inverse correlation. It's going to look more like the dollar than um your USD, which is going to look like the opposite. See? Here's the high. Look at the high on the other side, right? Where's the low? Look at the low over there. Because USD is the numerator in this instance. Whereas if you take it as the denominator, right? When this topped out, this was bottoming out. Look at Bitcoin. When this topped out, this was bottoming out, okay? So yeah, definitely relevant chart to look at, in my opinion. All right, guys. So I'm going to end the video there. Um, hopefully you gain some insights. Hopefully you learn something. Um, if you uh, have any questions, anything like that, you guys can hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Discord. If you want to join my Telegram, it's the pinned tweet on my page. If you want to join the Discord, go to my website, TraderMain.com. It tells you exactly how to join. It is free. Okay. And uh, I will be back. Um, I will be back soon with another video. Uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm not going away for the next little while. So hopefully, I'll be getting back to kind of maybe two videos a week instead of just the one. So maybe a video on Wednesday or Thursday. Probably Wednesday would make sense after FOMC. I think that would be a good time to do a video. So I don't know if I'll stream or I'll just upload something. Uh, I'll be doing a gambling stream. So if you like those, I'm doing another gambling stream tomorrow. So you can check that out. I'll tweet about it, obviously. And uh, that's all I got, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, if you want to support me, you like what I do, you want me to keep doing it, sign up with that Prime XBT link in the description of this video. Use code main 50 throw some money in there, start following along. Just how I'm talking about dollar yen, euro USD, ES. You can trade all those things on Prime with Crypto's Collateral. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I will talk to you all later.